we'll start this episode with a little bit of ditch bank mowing. We're headed to our farm in southeastern Illinois, but Randall's property is along the way, so we decided to stop and mow his ditch bank. In this area, like a lot of farming areas I'm assuming, the farmer is responsible for mowing the ditch banks. Yeah, the county or the state might come along and mow right along the edge of the road once or twice a year, but the far ditch bank and, well, doing a better cleanup job is really up to the farmer. I kind of wanted to see how this Rhino TS-10 would work in a road ditch anyway, so it seemed like the perfect opportunity. I wasn't quite bold enough with Johnny 5 to move further up the left ditch bank there, so I couldn't quite get all the way up to the crop. Yep, got in the dirt a little bit. That's not unusual on an uneven terrain like a ditch bank. So I just raised the mower a little bit and went on. I'm actually out of spec here. That right wing appears to be more than 45 degrees from the center section. Okay, now we've arrived at the 80 acres that Christy and I have there. It's probably a mile up the road from Randall's house. Randall's being my spotter here as I go under that uh, unloading auger. Be nice to mow under there and get all those weeds down, but we don't want to hit it. Once I got started, I could trim pretty close around that grain bin. Probably could have even got a couple inches closer. Might have been a little bit more confident. Not sure if you can see it or not, but I'm right up against the edge of that concrete foundation now. This type of trimming's probably just as easy or easier with a pull-type mower than it is with a three-point mower. I'm not really sure how large this barn lot is, but I would guess about an acre or so, maybe an acre and a half. That would be including what I'm calling the barn lot, as well as the house site that we'll get to a little later. Doesn't look like our barn's getting any better. I think there may be a hole in the roof, I'm not sure. It's kind of sad, but there's just no use for old barns like that anymore. We need to get down there and clean it up at some point. Sounds like a wintertime project to me. Give her a try. Oh, it's thin. Now, it's not as big as all of your Johnny's, so <laughs> take it easy on it. All right. <laughs> Let's see what you think. We wanted to get some drone footage of this. Unfortunately, we left the controller at our home in Indiana. So, 
I had to go with plan B. I decided to climb up on the grain bin. See if I could get a good view there. Here's a view out across the entire 80 acres. There's 11 acres of woods there on the right and 69 acres of farmland. One thing I noticed from this angle is how easy it is to see the quality of cut by this mower. Oftentimes when you're seeing a bush hog type mower behind a tractor, the wheel tracks leave areas that are just kind of mashed down and not actually cut. It seems like this mower does a great job of, of picking that back up, putting a suction on that grass and picking it back up so it can cut it off. Overall, really impressed with the quality of cut. Now my brother Tom keeps reminding me that it won't be as good when the blades get dull, but hey, I'm just going to enjoy it while they're sharp. They use this space to turn the grain trucks around when they're unloading grain in the grain bin. If we ever get rid of the barn, we might shrink the space a little bit, but it's still needed. This type of work is probably not the first thing you think about when you think of farming. Usually you think about the actual growing of the crop or raising the livestock. There's a lot of this type of utility work that has to be done. My family has enough mowing to keep them busy for several days during the late summer. Spaces this size are even smaller, usually. Ditch banks, waterways, around ponds like you saw in our last episode. The landowners appreciate it when you keep it mowed. Looks pretty good for one trip over and only once a year. That was the easy part. The rest of this is a lot more trimming. I think you might enjoy watching this part because you'll get to see just how different it is to trim with a mower like this than it is with a three-point mounted brush hog type mower. Here you can see an advantage. You can back that mower way up under a tree where your tractor won't fit.
Check out the neighbor's tiny dirt pan. I think little Johnny would fit inside it. Now I'm struck just by how quiet this mower is. Okay, so it's not quiet when you're hitting a six inch chunk. a sassafras tree. We use sassafras for wiener sticks. Cut them right here. You can put a hot dog on each one of those. And the sassafras uh, taste is transferred into the hot dog when you roast it. If you've been watching our episodes all along, we've shown you several videos from this particular property. Christy and I bought this property in 1998. Before then, I don't know when it was torn down, but before then there was a house that stood right in here. A big brick house, solid brick house. Uh, inside, outside walls seemed like it was all brick. Very inefficient from a heating standpoint. Would have been a magnificent home in its time. I, I have no idea how old it was. That house was torn down when I was a kid, so that was a long time ago. Now Tom, Randall, and Dad use it for the big shed, they would call it. They store a couple of augers out here. Uh, they've got the ridger over here. Uh, that ridger will do 12 or 16 rows of ridges, sort of like a middle buster, only 17 of them. Takes a pretty good tractor to pull it. We put the tractor into EPTO. So that means the PTO can run at 540 RPMs at much lower engine RPMs supposed to save some fuel. I shouldn't say it'd be easier on the tractor, but it consumes less fuel. The reason you would not want to use EPTO is if you needed every horsepower you have. But if you have some spare horsepower, it's a great way to save some fuel. Mowing around the side of an old house is always, well, risky. In this case, we know there's a cistern right out there, a cistern that we need to get filled in. We're gonna do that at some point. Or wait, I can't remember. Maybe my dad already filled it in. In any case, if it's still open, we have gotta get it filled in. It, when I say open, it's got a cover on it. Uh, there's no way anybody can get into it accidentally, uh, but it is there, or it was there. But that's just an example. Anytime there was an old house, there could be all kinds of trash and just items that you wouldn't want to hit with a mower. If you really want to do a good job mowing an area like this, it takes a lot of time. If you're trying to do this type of work uh, for custom hire, it doesn't make much sense to price something like this by the acre because you spend most of your time just backing in and trimming, not covering a lot of ground. like a saw and grapple project up there ahead. You need to get that tree out of there and make it a lot easier to mow.
can't believe this strip has been mowed in a couple of years. The 15 foot mower won't fit in here. Hose is getting kind of wound up in there. It was hanging down too low on the ground to suit me. Okay. Thought maybe I could slip this backwards a little bit and leave a little more of it lay on top of the mower. Yeah, one of them's a lot longer than the other. Yeah. There. How's that? Looks better. What do you think of that door? I like that door. It's pretty slick. I would have never thought of putting a cylinder on it. Yeah, a little pneumatic yeah. dampener cylinder, right? Yeah, the one we got's got a key on top, and then it flops over, and then it, when it bangs back down, the metal door is heavy. Works pretty slick. I think we're able to get a lot more of this mowed with this smaller mower than what we could with our 15-footer in here around these augers, where we we need these mowed, need to mow here when we're got the augers out of here for harvest time, and uh, it kind of grows up. And yeah, and then you park them in the same place the next year, and so this is probably two years worth of. Yeah, or more. Yeah. And it's hard to get a mowed because you've got to move the augers to make it get it all mowed down. What do you think of this mower? I think it's really nice. I think it's pretty capable. Yeah, it's you know I noticed being outside here, it's really quiet. Yeah. Okay, well we better get to it. It's about to get dark. Yeah. We got the hard part about done now. Okay, <laughs> good. One thing that I find a little bit, I don't know, odd and mightily annoying about uh, the 5075E is that in the shuttle shift, the reverse direction actually goes faster than the forward direction. Not by much, maybe 10%. I would really like to see the forward direction faster than the reverse direction or at worst, the same speed. Randall, you've uh, got some time with Johnny Five now. Yeah. That new 10-foot Rhino Batwing. What do you think? What 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 really do you think about the thing? I think it's a pretty nice rig. I think it's matched pretty well. When I first saw it, I thought you had all kinds of tractor. Yeah. Didn't have enough more for your tractor, but after using it, I think it's about right. Now, you tried that EPTO. Is there enough power with that? I think so. Now, we were going real slow here. If you were actually doing field mowing, you'd want to probably be in a higher gear, right? Yeah, and if you mowed a little more often than once a year, your grass wouldn't be quite as thick, and, yeah. and it, it would pull a lot easier, too. Yeah. I think it it worked fine. We had some more stuff we were supposed to mow today, but the day has got away from us. We were a little bit lazy. We went and ate ice cream this afternoon. Well, it was for the Farm Bureau. Yeah, it was the Edwards County Farm Bureau. I'm a member. Did you know that? Yeah. They let me in. They checked my membership right off there. Not... <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on... Tractor time with Tim.